Hi, my name is Emma Qualtro and I manage the fraud and anti-money laundering team within Barclays. I would like to thank the Office of Cyber Security and Information Assurance for inviting me to participate in their virtual cyber aisle. And my aim over the next 15 minutes is to raise awareness of fraud and cyber security in relation to social media and social engineering. We've seen a real change in the way fraudsters are now operating. Where they were once targeting the banks and the banking systems, as we enhance our focus towards cybercrime prevention, they are now targeting our customers directly. Despite the many steps taken by banks and the finance industry as a whole, we have seen a huge growth in fraud being driven by online adverts and social media content. These include romance scams perpetrated by fraudsters on online dating sites, investment fraud where criminals often advertise what appear to be genuine investment opportunities online, but it is a scam, and purchase fraud where goods are advertised online and on auction sites at too good to be true rates in order to entice people to buy. But again, in most cases, it is likely to be a scam. In addition to this, fraudsters have also been targeting younger people online through Money Mule adverts, offering students and young people money to have funds transferred through their bank accounts and back out again. Breaches at third parties continue to drive fraud losses with several high profile incidents in 2019 involving well-known brands where customer data was stolen. Whether this be a retailer or a utility company or elsewhere, the theft of personal and financial data can both directly lead to fraud losses and be used by criminals as part of their scams. In 2019, there was also an increase in investment scams as criminals turned to online platforms to try and defraud victims of large sums of money. We are now seeing this trend increase further in 2020. Previously, criminals have used cold calling to target victims through investment and pension scams. However, criminals have increasingly moved online and the nature of the frauds has become ever more sophisticated. The purchase scams have also become increasingly familiar and currently accounts for 60% of all authorised push payment volume. As criminals abuse online platforms such as auction websites or social media to target their victims. So some key statistics. There's 1.8 billion unauthorised frauds prevented by the financial industry last year. However, criminals still successfully stole a further 1.2 billion. On average, malware can be on a computer for 231 days before a cyber criminal attacks. If a customer authorises a payment themselves, the current legislation means that they have no legal protection to cover them for any losses they incur. And four out of five of the top causes of data breaches are because of human error. So fraud and scams. Although we, we use the term fraud, we use the term scam, they are very different in their own right. So a fraud is actually where someone else accesses your account and takes your money without your authorization. An authorised push payment scam or an APP scam is where you are actually duped into giving or sending someone your money. So what this is classed as is you're authorising and you're pushing that payment through yourself. The banks are facilitating your own request. So liability. Every case is reviewed on its merit and thoroughly investigated before any decision on reimbursement can be made. So a refund may be given in the event of a fraud. However, it's unlikely that a refund will be made for an APP scam. So social engineering, what is social engineering? The, the manipulation of situations and people that result in the targeted individuals divulging confidential information. So social engineering is one of the most prolific and effective means of gaining access to secure systems and obtaining sensitive information, yet it requires minimal technical knowledge. Your people are your biggest weakness when it comes to cyber security. It's a tactic by which criminals groom and manipulate people into transferring money or divulging their personal and financial details. And it's commonly used in deception scams. So in a deception scam, a, cr a criminal will typically pose as a representative from a genuine organisation such as a bank or the police, maybe a retailer, a utility company or a government department. To persuade, to persuade people to act, the criminal often claims that there has been suspicious activity on an account or that a refund is owed or that account details need to be updated or verified and the customer must act quickly. 
The criminal's aim is to then trick their intended victim into giving away their personal or financial information, such as logon details, a card or bank information, or also allowing remote access to their computers. This stolen information is then used by the criminal to access an account and make an unauthorised payment. So what do the scammers do? They create a sense of authority because we tend to comply with authority rather than follow our conscience. They create a sense of consequence, so we tend to be loss averse and will seek to avoid a negative consequence. They create a sense of urgency, so we make the worst decisions under stress and time pressure. And they appeal to our vanity or greed, so we struggle to resist opening that email attachment which promises to tell us how much our colleagues get paid. So what are the top channels for social engineering scams? Well, first of all, we've got phishing, and that is email. Not only is it email, we're now seeing an increase in the volume of phishing attempts via social media platforms such as Messenger or WhatsApp. We've got landline, which is phishing, text message, which is smishing, and post. And here's a short video for you to watch. What day is it? It's my birthday! It's good to share, but check you have the right privacy settings or someone can make a lot of money from being you. So email scams, which is known as phishing. So how does this work? Phishing is an untargeted mass emails sent to many people asking for sensitive information, such as bank details, or encouraging people to visit fake websites. So you may be asked to click on a link to a web fake website and enter security credentials, for example, passwords. Or when you click on the link or attachment, malicious software can be downloaded onto your computer or device. So spear phishing is another form of phishing. However, where phishing was untargeted, spear phishing is a targeted form of phishing. This is where the email is designed to look like it's from a person the recipient knows and or trusts. Fraudsters take the time to research about employees, their roles, interests, activities, etc. to add credibility. And in addition to this, there's also whale phishing or whaling. So this is a highly targeted phishing attack aimed at senior executives, masquerading as a legitimate email. Whaling is digitally enabled fraud through social engineering. It's designed to encourage victims to perform a secondary action, such as initiating a wire transfer of funds. So some best practice. Always remember, email addresses can be disguised and email accounts compromised. In some instances, it may be a slight variation on the email where one digit is, is different, but it's just, you know, take care, look at the email, look that it's from the same email address that you're expecting it from. Do not click on links or attachments in unexpected emails and check the return path if you're unsure, engage with your IT department or an IT professional. If you're unsure, contact the sender directly on a method other than the email received. That could be phone call, um, which is, is probably one of the best and most secure methods. And consider adopting a fish me or report a phishing add-in to your outlook. So vishing and smishing attacks. So vishing, which is voice, you know, best practice, do not assume a caller is genuine because they know information about you or your company. Fraudsters are skilled in collecting enough information and use technology to be convincing. Deep fake is a type of artificial intelligence used to create convincing image, audio and video hoaxes. Fraudsters can use this to make you believe a trusted person is calling or video you with the aim that you will disclose private or personal information. So again, remember that Barclays or any other banks may ask you for some information, but will never ask you for your PIN number or your full password. We will never provide you with account details to make a payment. We'll never request you change permission levels of who can access your account. And we'll never request that you grant remote access to your PC or systems. And one thing we will never do is move, ask you to move funds to a safe account. So we look at smishing, best practice for that. So do not click on links in text messages unless you are certain that they are 100% genuine. Fraudsters are skilled in collecting information and using technology to be convincing. 
So if there is a number contained within a text message that you receive, do not call that number. Always call a no, no number or obtain the details from your bank statement or your cards. So ask yourself, if the sender is genuine, would they really contact you via text? And remember that even if the text message seems to come from someone you trust, their number may have been compromised or spoofed. A man in the middle attack, what, what does this mean? So a man in the middle attack is where the attacker intercepts the network, watches the transactions between the two parties and steals sensitive information. The criminal can access users' banking credentials or account passwords or other valuable information. So don't just assume that the Wi-Fi link is legitimate. It could be a bogus link set up by a cyber criminal that's trying to capture valuable information from unsuspected users. Consider using a virtual private network when connecting to public Wi-Fi, or alternatively use 3G, 4G, or even 5G. And here's a short video to support this. That lovely. How much? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is passwords. How secure are yours? We've looked at some of the most popular passwords in 2019, and as you can see from the screen, a lot of them are quite simple to, to review and to guess. You know, using one, two, three, four, five, six, or even one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is probably one of the most common passwords that people will have because it's easy to remember. It could be that you use your place of birth. It could be that you use um, something that you are aware of, but others are as well. So passwords are the front door keys to an organisation. And here is how to get hold of them. So by deception, and that's tricking you into revealing it. By brute force, so an automated effort to hack your password. By using spyware, so that's recording your login. Or even shoulder service surfing so if you're in an internet cafe they may be watching you log in so that they can see i'm going to give you an, another video now to watch um, and this will hopefully reinforce the message too you know, we've been hearing a lot about cybersecurity lately largely because of what happened to sony companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever president obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers and he plans to address this in the state of the union speech on Tuesday, and it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is, we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password one, two, three. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on a Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> It's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Is you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. 
So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, six, 12, oh, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh my goodness. Um, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me it's strong enough. Ireland, one, two, three, four. Gemma, one, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. Well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like so what? like... Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name... What's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So, Maria is your password? Oh, yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, protecting yourself online. There are things that you can do to protect yourself from being scammed online. So first of all, check the signs of fake online shops. So you can search for a company's details and this will tell you if they're registered company or not. If you're buying something on a site you haven't used before, spend a few minutes to check it. Start by finding its terms and conditions. The company's address should have a street name, not just a post office box. And check to see what people have said about the company. It's worth looking for reviews on different websites. Don't just rely on the reviews the company has put it on its own website. And don't rely on seeing a padlock in the address bar of your browser. This doesn't guarantee you're buying from a real company. So don't click on or download anything you don't trust. For an example, if you get an email from a company with a strange email address, if you do this, it could infect your computer with a virus. So make sure that your antivirus software is up to date to give you more protection. Be careful about giving away too much information. So some scammers try to get your personal information. For example, the name of your primary school or your national insurance number. They can then use this information to hack your accounts. And if you come across sites that ask for this type of information without an obvious reason, just check that they're legitimate and take five to check that. Check if your details have been shared online. So sometimes your login details can be made publicly available when a website is hacked. This means that someone could use your details in a scam, and this is where we see data breaches. So check whether your accounts have been put at risk on haveibeenporn.com. Some of the things that you can do to protect yourself is to make sure your online accounts are secure. So make sure you have a strong password for your email accounts that you don't use anywhere else. If you're worried about remembering lots of different passwords, you can always use Password Manager. So some websites let you add a second step when you log into your account, and this is also known as a two-factor authentication. So this makes it harder for scammers to access your accounts. And find out how to set up two-factor two authentication across your online platform services. So you can always pay by debit or credit card to give you an extra protection if things go wrong. And know how your bank operates. So check your bank's websites, to see how your bank will, will and won't communicate with you. For example, find out the types of security questions they may ask if they do phone you. And to find out about recent scams, utilize the internet as well. Utilize your social media platforms. They give you a lot of information about the types of scams that are ongoing. There's Action Fraud, and there's also the Oxia website, which gives you so much information at your fingertips. So that's it from the presentation for, for me. So thank you very much for your time and for listening. Thanks, bye-bye.